Hi, this is music journalist Justin Cantor. Recently, the UK-based Edsel Records label has been putting out a great series called the Taboo Reborn series. And this line of CD reissues showcases original full-length Taboo albums by legendary artists such as Shirelle, Alexander O'Neill, and the SOS band with expanded content like rare bonus remixes, as well as accompanying historical essays in the CD booklets, many containing interviews with the original artists and producers behind these projects. Well, one of the lesser known albums to be reissued in this series is called Catwalk, which was the 1987 debut LP by Battle Creek, Michigan native, Kathy Mathis, who has since gone on to become a well-known gospel artist under her name of Kathy Ori. And I had the great pleasure of recently speaking with Kathy for the liner notes that I wrote for both the Catwalk reissue, which just came out this May 6, 2013, and also for the reissue of her second album, A Woman's Touch, which will be released uh, this coming August 2013. Uh, what you're about to hear are excerpts from my interview with Kathy, uh, specifically concerning her musical beginnings leading up to the Catwalk release. Um, this album included her top 40 R&B hit, Late Night Hour, as well as Baby I'm Hooked, and it featured a very impressive array of supporting musicians on the album, uh, such as Fred Wesley on horns, uh, Paul Lawrence on um, guitars, and uh, Penny Ford on background vocals. And you can order these uh, expanded CD reissues from Amazon's uh, various sites, the US one, the UK one. Um, they're, of course, also available in select retailers and also specialty online shops such as Dusty Group. Uh, so I hope you enjoy hearing these excerpts and I hope that you'll um, check out Kathy's music as well and purchase the Taboo Reborn 2013 <laughs> expanded CD edition of Catwalk. Enjoy. So I thought we'd talk uh, or start by talking about your musical beginnings. Um, from what I know, you were born in Battle Creek, Michigan. And um, I was just curious, um, what do you remember about your introduction to music growing up? It's church. When, you, when it all comes down to it, it was my, uh, my, my first encounter with uh, uh, piano. Mm -hmm. And I really started picking out songs on the piano before I started singing. Okay. So uh, it, it was that experience with the church as well as uh, um, uh, then it went on to uh, my love for uh, the piano. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I was, uh, my mom put me in piano lessons. Mm -hmm. And. I was just uh, I was I was just surrounded. I mean, I, I my whole family is uh, musically inclined. They uh, some somebody play a drum set or somebody blow the sax or somebody play the keyboard, and <laughs> you know we could just get together in the living room and <laughs> and have a concert on wow, the spot. That's awesome. No rehearsal. Yeah, we could just go for it. And then I I got so intrigued with uh, harmony and learning how to harmonize and sing my soprano part and stay on my part or then I was uh, I thought I was really good at it then mm -hmm. I, I would be able to sing alto tenor oh. and uh, not quite bass but uh, <laughs> I you know, just can sing all the parts so nice. I'll just work around it yeah yeah so yeah. had your parents had they pursued careers as musicians or did they work as musicians or it was just something that they love to do in their spare time it was just a thing that passed on. It, 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 you know, my mom, she was four, one of 14, uh -huh. and um, and wow. they they had a singing group, you know, but it wasn't anything on a major level or, mm -hmm. you know, mainstream or anything, but it was just they would, you know, sing together as a family at different functions and different venues and things like that, but I don't think they ever really recorded anything. 
it wasn't until my generation, uh-huh. uh, my my cousins and um, they they went on to uh, do uh, some some recording and stuff. And I don't think they even went to the uh, to the level that I went had gotten to. But they they knew it. They were on the back side of recording, like engineering, and oh, okay. they they worked with some top people. And so my cousin Earl, he was uh, very instrumental in me. Um, uh, doing my first recording when I was, uh, well, when I was nine years of age, I don't know if you've read this, Justin, but when I was nine years of age, our church did a, uh, a recording and I did the, the, uh, lead song to all of my life, all of my life. Okay. And I- then... You saw that? Well, no, I didn't know. I was going to ask you. I heard you had done a gospel recording when you were very young. I didn't know what it was. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, doing that first uh, gospel recording with your church, um, what stands out in your memory about doing that recording? Doing that recording, Mm -hmm. um, uh, it was like, this is what I want to do. This is what I'm born to do, Mm -hmm. you know. I was really starting to wrap my mind around, I love this. I uh, love doing this. Yeah. Okay. And so, yeah. And that was like um, a, a local uh, a release, an LP release at that time? Yeah, exactly. It was a local thing that was released. It was the Chain Lake District Choir uh, from Michigan, and different groups would come together from different parts of Michigan. And we would come together once or twice a year. And this particular year, we did the first recording. And um, so, you know, it was just an excitement and something to look forward to, especially when the vinyl, the vinyl rather, you know, it was that finished product. And yeah. I couldn't wait to yeah, see my name on there. And <laughs> there I was. And yeah. so from doing that, uh, that was at a young age, and I know, um, I don't know how far I'm jumping ahead here, but, um, oh, I, I know, I did want to ask you, like, in, when you were in school, did you also, like, do things like choirs in school? Was music a part of your, like, schooling growing up, too, or was it strictly in the church that you were doing I'm telling music? you what, Justin, every which way you turn, music was okay. around me. I surrounded myself with music. I'm also heavily in the sports, but I ended up going to college on a basketball scholarship, but that's another. Oh, topic. wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah, and so if it wasn't sports, it was uh, music. So, I mean, from uh, from grade school to junior high, I was in the school court. I was in uh, the, week, uh, the um, uh, it was called the, uh, I can't call the name of it, but anyway, I was in, in all of the, the school choirs and all of our Folly shows and different different performances that the show would put on each year, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, it was a highlight. Okay, now at some point um, you did your first secular recording, uh, "Searching for Your Love," I believe, on a local label called Killer B. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, how did that come about for you? Well. Because my family began to notice uh, my uh, giftings, and so they began to pour into it. And so uh, it just, you know, we went to a studio in, in Kalamazoo, Michigan, uh-huh. and uh, that's where we landed, uh, and we did a few songs, and we were learning about the business, and here I am, little Kathy, you <laughs> know, um, and I was going for the ride. Yeah. <laughs> I was, yeah. So you were you uh, you were still like a, a teenager when you did that, right? Oh yeah, I was fourteen. I can remember it to this day when it was released. Um, and uh, then, of course, they you know made the awareness to the high school, and because I was in high school uh, by then, I was, must have been in tenth grade or so. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And and so you know, Battle Creek thought they that you know, wow, we have first. A star, you know. <laughs> so everybody, everybody in Battle Creek had hopes for me, with the exception of those that you know were jealous or haters or whatever. Right. <laughs> but you know, because you know those little girls, uh, they yeah. they didn't like that. You know, they gave me a little, they gave me a little hard time. Wow. But they they later came around and began <laughs> to celebrate with me. You know, so I just oh. had to get over that. 
yeah, but uh, it was it was a, a, a fun time in my life, you know, and uh, then I began to go on the road uh, with SOS Band. Uh-huh. Yeah, and so, so you, I did, you So know. you were, so you did that, this is even before you went to Atlanta with your deal and everything. That is correct. Okay, so how did, how did you encounter them? How did that come about? Um... Well, you know what? Maybe I'm, maybe I'm, uh, no, that is true. That's, that's amazing. Well, <laughs> it was a promoter. Yeah, it's a promoter. You know, because Justin, it actually is a uh, full circle because it was a promoter out of Battle Creek. You okay. know, he was always trying to bring something to the home front, you know, the, the home of Tony the Tiger, you uh. know, uh, and that was basically all you had. But, you know, we were grateful for that because it would bring people from all over the world. Oh, yeah. But we didn't have a whole lot of, uh, you know, entertainment. And this this guy, uh, he brought the SOS man in. And so the S he had me to open that, that show. And so that's when the SOS man and I met. And oh. so I did a couple of days with them from that. But lo and behold, I ended up moving to Atlanta <laughs> and running into running into those guys again. That's fun. most of those black, yeah, most of those guys were based out of Atlanta. Well, I was wondering um, when you did that first. Well, so with that that you mentioned about opening for the SOS band, um, did, was that something that led you to move to Atlanta, or did that happen later that you ended up doing that? Well, I just, uh, Atlanta was starting to be the buzz, okay? And, and mind you, this is before Atlanta is what we know Atlanta to be right. now. And so what happened was I was singing at my pastor's funeral. Okay. And uh, a gentleman in, that came to the funeral was the brother-in-law to the deceased, my pastor. Okay. And uh, what I didn't know, he you know, of course, you don't know who's in your audience, mm -hmm. and he's this big-time promoter for Polygram Records. Oh, okay. Well, little Kathy is up there singing, uh -huh. and uh, once the funeral was over, he's like, he's making his way to this little girl. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, he wants to, uh, it was almost like he wanted to sign me immediately. Wow. And so... Uh, uh, the relationship started there. Of course, he met my mom, mm -hmm. and uh, and so for my high school senior year graduation gift, I begged my mom to drive me to Atlanta. I didn't know what was there, but I had a pulling in my belly and my gut. Uh -huh. I had to get to Atlanta, uh -huh. and so when I went there for my, she did just that. She drove me to Atlanta. And uh, that was like the beginning. I said, you know what? I had two academic scholarships. Wow. Business full ride scholarships. Wow. And I, uh, I began to, the, the promoter, he called me. His name is Luther Terry. Actually, he's deceased now. Okay. But Luther Terry. And so he began sending for me, recording me, getting me in the studios getting me before producers, getting my material together, and he would send for me back and forth from um, Battle Creek to uh, Atlanta, or I would meet in Chicago, and so we were putting this thing together. And so I couldn't focus on being a bank teller. Right. I wanted, you know, I'm like, I want to go and sing. I'm born to do this. I want to go and sing. Wow. So my mother, my mother was like, oh, no, what is she doing? <laughs> I don't have to pay for college. She got the full <laughs> ride of scholarship. I know. And, I, and, I, and I, I looked at my mom. I said, I got to follow my dream. So I ended up moving to Atlanta. Wow. And, uh, and then I ran into those guys again from SOS Band, and uh, it, it all kind of clicked from there.